The next sutta is 5.8.78. The Buddha said, Monks, there are these five fears in the way. What five? Take the case of a monk who reflects thus, I am now young, a mere youth, black haired, and blessed with the beauty of youth, the heyday of youth, the prime of youth. But time will come when old age shall touch this body, and when grown old and overcome by age, not easy is it to turn to the Buddha's word. Not easy things are forest wildernesses, the outland bed and seat to seek. Before that state come to me, unwelcome, undesired, unloved. Lo, I will put forth energy against that time, even to attain the unattained, to master the unmastered, to realize the unrealized. And of that state possessed, I will dwell comforted even when old. Monks, this is the first fear in the way. Again he reflects, I have health and well-being, a good digestion, which is, which is neither over cold nor overheated, but even and suitable for striving. But time will be when sickness shall touch this body, and sick and ill, not easy is it to turn to the Buddha's word. Lo, I will put forth energy and dwell comforted even when sick. Monks, this is the second fear in the way. Again he reflects, now there is no famine, and crops are good, food is easy to get, and it is easy to keep oneself going by gleanings and favors. But time will be when there is a famine, bad crops, and difficulty in getting food. Nor will it be easy to keep oneself going by gleanings and favors. And the famine-stricken men will move to where there is ample food, and there one will dwell in a crowd and a throng, and where such conditions are, not easy is it to turn to the, to the Buddha's word. Lo, I will put forth energy and dwell comforted even in time of famine. Monks, this is the third fear in the way. Again he reflects, Now men dwell in friendly fellowship together as mingled milk and water. They do not quarrel, but look upon one another with friendly eye. But time will be when fear is about perils of bandits, and the country folk mount their carts and drive away, and the fear-stricken men will move away to where there is safety, and there one will live in crowds and throngs, and where such conditions are, not easy is it to turn to the Buddha's word. Lo, I will put forth energy and dwell comforted even in time of fear. This is the fourth fear in the way. Moreover, monks, the monk reflects thus, now the Sangha lives in friendly fellowship together, finding comfort in one teaching. But the time will come when the Sangha will be divided. And when that happens, not easy is it to turn to the Buddha's word. Not easy things are forest wildernesses, the outland bed and seat to seek. Before that state come, unwelcome, undesired, unloved. Lo, I will put forth energy against that time even to attain the unattained, to master the unmastered, <clears throat> to realize the unrealized. And of that state possessed, I will dwell comforted, even though the Sangha be divided. Monks, this is the fifth fear in the way. These monks are the five fears in the way. That's the end of the sutta. So this sutta is uh, reflections on impermanence. Because of impermanence, eh, our present state eh, can always change. So, the person cultivating the holy life eh, or the spiritual path eh, should always con co always consider that you you are growing old day by day, eh, and uh, when we grow older, it's much more difficult to practice the spiritual path. So now it's better that we put forth energy now eh, than to think of putting energy, eh, putting forth energy in the future. Uh, as uh, we heard the previous sutta, eh, that uh, whenever we can find some time every day, we should practice some chetos, samatha, to tranquilize the mind. Eh, otherwise, we are not living by dhamma. The second one is to consider that sickness one day eh, will come to us. So, before we become sick, eh, we should put forth energy. The third one, famine. Fourth one, bandits. And the fifth one, which is applicable only to monks, eh, is that the sangha will be divided. Eh. 
so these are the contemplations of impermanence uh, we should often make uh, so that we get the um, urgency to practice uh, the holy life the next one is sutta 5.8.79 monks these five fears in the way which have not yet arisen will arise in the future be you fully awake for them and being awake strive to get rid of them what five monks there will be in the long road of the future monks who have not made body become that is not developed body eh? not made moral conduct become not made mind become not made wisdom become and those who have not made this becoming will cause the ordination of others and verily they will not be able to lead them in the way of higher moral conduct higher mind higher wisdom and they too will become monks who have not made body become not made moral conduct become not made mind become not made wisdom become and those who have not made this becoming will cause the ordination of others and verily they will not be able to lead them in the way of higher moral conduct higher mind higher wisdom and they too will become monks who have not made body become not made moral conduct become not made mind become not made wisdom become thus verily monks from corrupt dhamma comes corrupt discipline vinaya from corrupt discipline corrupt dhamma monks this is the first fear in the way which though not yet arisen will arise in the future be you fully awake for it and being awake strive to get rid of it again monks monks who have not made this becoming will give will teach others and verily they will not be able to lead them in the way of higher moral conduct higher mind higher wisdom and those two who have not made this becoming will teach others and will not be able to lead them in the way of higher moral conduct higher mind higher wisdom thus verily monks from corrupt dhamma comes corrupt discipline from corrupt discipline corrupt dhamma monks this is the second fear in the way again monks monks who have not made this becoming when giving a talk on the higher dhamma happy dhamma will not be fully awake to the meaning but will enter on a state of darkness thus verily monks from corrupt dhamma comes corrupt discipline from corrupt discipline corrupt dhamma monks this is the third fear in the way again monks who have not made this becoming will not listen will not give a ready ear will not want to understand or deem such things should be recited and mastered when those discourses suttas eh, spoken by the tathagata deep profound in meaning transcending the world concerning emptiness are recited but those discourses of poets mere poems just a show of words and phrases alien the utterances of disciples to these when recited they will listen will give a ready ear will want to understand and deem such things should be recited and mastered thus indeed monks from corrupt dhamma comes corrupt discipline from corrupt discipline corrupt dhamma monks this is the fourth fear in the way moreover monks there will be in the long road of the future monks who have not made body moral conduct mind or wisdom become and those elders who have not made this becoming will become luxurious lax prime movers in backsliding shirking the burden of the secluded life and they will, they will put forth no effort to attain the unattained to master the unmastered to realize the unrealized and those who come after them will fall into their views and they too will become luxurious lax prime movers in backsliding shirking the burden of the secluded life so this sutta a very interesting sutta about the five fears uh, the buddha asks us to be careful of in the future the first one is that uh, a monk who has not developed 
body, virtue, mind and wisdom will ordain others. The second one, he has not developed these uh, qualities. Uh, he will give guidance to others, will become an acharya, a teacher. In Thailand, they call an achan to others. Uh, and uh, this is uh, something uh, the Buddha said we have to be careful of. When we look into the Vinaya books, uh, the Buddha in the early years. Uh, Ask the monks uh, to attain liberation before they teach others. And later, because uh, the Arahants were getting less and less, the Buddha relaxed the rules. Uh, and eventually the Buddha said uh, that a monk cannot ordain others and cannot give out guidance or teach others unless they have uh, cultivated themselves for ten years. Ten years was the minimum uh, time uh, a monk was expected uh, to practice. And uh, the first five years he was supposed to live with his teacher and get proper guidance. Uh, that's according to the Vinaya. A monk has to either live with his upajaya, his preceptor, or live with an acharya, a teacher, for five years. And during these five years, he gets the benefit of the experience of his teacher or preceptor, his proper guidance in um, the suttas, the vinaya, and also meditation, etc. So, after five years, if he wanted to, he could go and live alone, practice alone for another five years. And then having ten years of experience behind him, then only he can give guidance to others. And this was the minimum standard set in the Vinaya. But even then, sometimes some monks don't follow this standard. After they wear the robe for a short while, they start taking disciples or they start uh, uh, giving guidance to others uh, or ordain. But ordination nowadays, uh, generally, uh, they, they don't ordain uh, because... Uh, Nowadays, uh, especially in the Buddhist countries, uh, you have uh, certain guidelines given. But still, uh, some people, some monks, uh, they take uh, disciples too early. Uh. So this was a warning the Buddha gave uh, that uh, um, a monk uh, should cultivate himself before he teach others. And the third one is... Uh, it's talking about Abhidhamma, but in Abhidhamma in the suttas uh, does not refer to the Abhidhamma Pitaka that we now have. Uh, the Abhi, the higher Dhamma in the suttas, uh, if you look through the suttas, it is reference to the higher teachings, and the higher teachings in the suttas generally refers to the uh, teachings uh, that can get us out of samsara. And uh, in particular, the 37 Bodhi Pakya Dhammas, the Aryan Eightfold Path, the seven Bojangas, factors of enlightenment, the five faculties, the five powers, the uh, four uh, Satipatthana, etc., etc. So, uh, so when a monk uh, wants to give a talk on the higher Dhamma, then he should uh, understand. Otherwise, uh, the Buddha said, he will enter on a state of darkness. Mm. And then the fourth one, the fourth one is an interesting one, because here the Buddha is said in the fu says, uh, in the future, those discourses, those suttas of the Buddha, people do not want to listen to them will not want to give a ready ear, will not want to understand or deem that such things should be recited and mastered. Uh, those, uh, is it, uh, those suttas spoken by the Buddha, deep, profound in meaning, transcending the world, concerning emptiness. These uh, people don't want to listen. But those teachings of disciples... Uh, they would want to listen. 
and uh, meaning uh, teachings of uh, monk disciples and also later books uh, which are other than the suttas uh, people uh, take an interest to them whereas the Buddha here is saying that the, the, the discourses that uh, teachings that we want to study should be the Buddha's discourses and this is very clear here and we should always remember in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta when the Buddha was about to pass away he was asked now that the teacher is going to Nibbana who should we take as our teacher and the Buddha said take the Dhamma Vinaya as your teacher our teacher is always the Dhamma Vinaya always remember that and the Dhamma in the Amkutra Nikaya is defined as the suttas as the suttas and the Vinaya, of course, concerns only monks. Uh, so we must be very familiar with the discourses and the suttas of the, the discourses of the Buddha before we practice. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will go on the wrong step and then take us many years before we realize that we've gone on the wrong step. And then the last one, the Buddha is talking about monks uh, who become luxurious and take the lead in backsliding, shirking the burden of the secluded life, making no effort to attain the unattained, to master the unmastered, to realize the unrealized. And when they do that, uh, their disciples will also follow their views, uh, will also become like that. And uh, they will make no effort uh, to get out of samsara. And uh, if you remember one of the earlier suttas I read, the Buddha said, uh, if a person wears the robe and he does not cultivate practice to get out of samsara, that means he does not practice the three factors of sila, samadhi, panya, moral conduct, concentration and wisdom, then the Buddha said he is not a monk even though he wears the robe. Uh, so it is very important uh, for a monk uh, to always remember that uh, the purpose of wearing the robe uh, is to practice to get out of suffering. Now, the next sutta is 5.8.80. Monks, there are five, these five fears in the way which have not arisen and will arise in the future. Be you fully awake for them and being awake, strive to get rid of them. What five? Monks, there will be in the long road of the future monks who long for fine robes, and they with this longing will leave the ways of wearing rags, will leave the forest wilderness, the outland bed and seat, and will move to village, town or Raja's capital, and make their dwelling there. And because of a robe, they will commit many things unseemly, unfit. Monks, this is the first fear in the way. Again, monks will long for rich alms food, will leave the ways of the common round, the forest wilderness, the outland bed and seat, and will move to village, town or raja's capital, seeking out as it were, with the tip of the tongue, tasty morsels. And because of food, they will commit many things unseemly, unfit. Monks, this is the second fear in the way. Again, monks will long for comfortable bed and seat, will leave the ways of the tree root abode, the forest wilderness, the outland bed and seat, and will move to village town or Raja's capital. And because of a bed and seat, they will commit things unseemly unfit. Monks, this is the third fear in the way. Again, monks will live in company with nuns and novices in training. And when this shall be, it may be expected that the monks will take no delight in leading the holy life, and either they will commit some foul act or give up the training and return to the lower life. Monks, this is the fourth fear in the way. Moreover, monks, there will be in the long road of the future monks who will live in company <coughs> with the park folk, and novices, and when this shall be, it may be expected that they will live and feast themselves on the plenty of hoarded stocks and will mark out their lands and crops. Monks, this is the fifth fear in the way, which though not yet arisen, will arise in the future. Be you fully awake for it, and being awake, strive to get rid of it. Monks, these are the five fears in the way. 
Uh, this is the last of the four suttas uh, concerning with the uh, fears in the way. And these are all uh, very important suttas. Uh. This sutta, <coughs> the first three, uh, concerns the uh, fine robes, rich food, and uh, comfortable dwelling. And um, if a, a monk stays in a town, uh, uh, capital, uh, because of these uh, uh, good requisites, uh, then it is not proper for a monk. And uh, in the uh, Vinaya books, uh, the, one of the disciples of the Buddha, Devadatta, he tried to be very ascetic and he asked the Buddha for five things. One of them was to to impose five conditions for all the monks. One was that monks should only live in secluded places, in forests, caves, etc. And forbid them to live in town areas. Another one was that monks should only take vegetarian food and not take any meat. Another one was that monks should go on arms round every day and not uh, just accept invitations. Uh. And another two conditions I've forgotten. But anyway, the Buddha disagreed. The Buddha said that if there are monks who want to live in forest areas, they may do so. If monks want to live in town areas, they may do so. If monks want to take um, food, uh, they should take what is given. Uh, they should not be selective of their food. Uh, if monks want to go on arms round, they may do so. If monks want to uh, go on invitations, uh, accept invitations, they may do so. So the Buddha in his wisdom uh, realized uh, that uh, it all depends on the monk. The precepts of the monks uh, grew up uh, later. In the initial stages, uh, when the Buddha did not impose uh, the precepts on the monks, uh, there were many arahants even without the precepts. And even though in the initial stages the Buddha allowed his disciples to take three meals a day, eh, there were many arahants. So it all depends on the monk. If a monk is a good monk, you don't have to impose many conditions. Eh. He will know how to control himself. If a monk is not a good monk, then even if you impose many conditions, eh, he will not follow. But here, in particular, the, the Buddha is just giving this warning that a monk should not go and live in a town area just because of good, of fine robes, because of rich food, because of comfortable dwelling. Uh, and um, in the Majima Nikaya, there is a sutta called the Nivapa Sutta, where the Buddha gave a simile of deers, a flock of deers, uh, or trying to get food. And then uh, the, the farmer grows the crops, and these deer, these deers, uh, they go and take the eat the farmer's crops. And when the farmer gets to know of it, uh, he traps the deer and kills them because they eat his crops. And then, out of fear, the deer went into the forest and tried to live in the deep forest and stay away from the farmer because the farmer can kill them. But staying in the deep forest, they found that food was a problem. So eventually they still have to come near the farmer to eat his, the, his crops, but they have to be very careful not to be caught, not to get trapped. So in the same way, the Buddha said, if a monk lives in the deep forest, it's very difficult to survive, won't get enough food. But if he lives near the lay people, he has to be very careful because he can get caught up. Uh, with all the lay people, if he associates too much with lay people, then uh, he's going to get killed. That means his holy life is going to be uh, destroyed. Uh, so the Buddha said, uh, the only way uh, for a monk to live uh, is to, he still has to live near people, lay people because he has to get the support from lay people. But at the same time, to protect himself, the Buddha said, uh, a monk has to cultivate Meditation, in particular strong samadhi, eh, not to be moved by uh, worldly things. Eh.
Samadhi is very essential because uh, if you have listened to the earlier suttas, uh, the Buddha said before a person can enter the first jhana, he's got to be secluded from sense desires. He's got to be secluded from unwholesome states before he can enter the first jhana. It's a very purified stage, uh, one-pointedness of mind. So if a monk uh, wants to uh, survive, uh, not get killed uh, by Mara, he has to cultivate samadhi. Uh, that's the uh, purpose of samadhi. Uh, that's why uh, uh, meditation is called bhavana, development of the mind. And uh, even though a, a monk stays among uh, lay people, uh, the Buddha said uh, one of the qualities a monk has to practice uh, is called aloofness. Aloofness means uh, even though he stays among lay people, he should not associate over much uh, with lay people. And then the third one is uh, in the future, the Buddha said, uh, uh, monk uh, has to be careful uh, that he does not live with nuns and novices. That means not live too near, because uh, if he associates too much with nuns and novices, uh, uh, especially with the opposite sex, uh, it is he can either break his precepts, uh, commit some foul offense, uh, or he gives up the training uh, from seeing the too much of the opposite sex. Uh, he can give up the training, so... That is why the Buddha said nah, that it's uh, very dangerous nah, for a monk nah, to live too close to nuns and novices. And then the last one is that uh, staying with park folk and novices um, and then uh, marking out the lands and crops. This refers to some monks nah, who own lands and crops nah, and plenty of property. Nah. In the Vinaya, it is not allowed for monks uh, to own lands and crops uh, that are arable, uh, that are cultivated, uh, that uh, can bring in income. Uh. It is only allowed for monks uh, to own monastery land. Uh, in the Vinaya, uh, monks uh, can own monastery land in the in the name of the Sangha and uh, not uh, private property. Uh. So. Uh, also in one of the later uh, suttas uh, that you hear later, the Buddha said, uh, uh, if a monk stays in a place uh, where he, his meditation can be disturbed by others, uh, that is not the ideal place. Uh, when a monk meditates, uh, he should not uh, be disturbed by lay people or any other person. Otherwise, he cannot progress much in his meditation. Mm -hmm. So these are the uh, suttas are uh, concerning with uh, warnings for the future. And these uh, four Im suttas uh, are considered very important. And they were selected by the Emperor Asoka and put among his edicts, you know, and the stone pillars that he set up. I think there's one is called the Badra edicts. And these, uh, these few suttas about fears in the way are mentioned in there. Now we come to Sutta number 5.9.88. The Buddha said, nah, Monks possessed of five qualities, the way of an elder monk is not to the advantage of many folk, is not for the happiness of many folk, is not for the good of many folk, it is to the harm and ill of devas and men. <coughs> of what five? There is the elder, time-honored and long gone forth, well-known, renowned, with a great following of householders and those gone forth, a receiver of the requisites, the robe, arms, lodging and medicines for sickness, who is much learned and has a retentive and well-stored mind, and those dhammas, lovely in the beginning, lovely in the middle, lovely in the end, are by him much heard, remembered, verbally recited, carefully considered in the mind, thoroughly understood in theory. But he is a wrong viewer with a perverted vision. <clears throat> he turns many, he turns away many folk from Saddhamma and sets them in what is not Saddhamma. 
which is true Dhamma. Thus, though he be an elder, time honored and long gone forth, so through him they fall into the way of wrong views. Through the elder, though the elder be well known, renowned, with a great following of householders and those gone forth, through him they fall into the way of wrong views. Though the elder be a receiver of the requisites, the robe, arms, lodging and medicines, etc., through him they fall into the way of wrong views. Though the elder be learned and has a retentive and well-stored mind, um, and those dhammas by him are much heard, remembered, verbally recited, carefully considered in the mind, thoroughly understood in theory, through him they fall into the way of wrong views. Monks possessed of these five qualities, the way of an elder is not to the advantage of many folk. Monks possessed of five qualities, the way of an elder is to the advantage of many folk. It's for the happiness of many folk, for the good of many folk. It is to the advantage and happiness of devas and men. Of what five? Similarly, the, the Sutta repeats uh, with all these qualities uh, of the elder, namely that the first one, he is long gone forth, well known, renowned, with a great following. The second one, that he receives much requisites. The third, that he is very much learned and the Dhammas are well um, well remembered by him, carefully considered in the mind, thoroughly understood in theory. And then he has right view. And because he has right view, he leads uh, many people into the true Dhamma, Sat Dhamma, as the end of the Sutta. Now this Sutta is quite interesting. This Sutta is saying that sometimes uh, you can, or probably the Buddha meant that in the future, uh, after the Buddha has, Buddha has passed into Nibbana, uh, there would be such a senior monk uh, with a great following uh, and well known, uh, and he's very much learned in the Dhamma, and in spite of that, uh, he has wrong view, he turns people away from the true Dhamma, Sat Dhamma. This Sat Dhamma is very important. Why does the Buddha refer to Sat Dhamma, true Dhamma? This implies that there is false Dhamma. Dhamma is the suttas, the teachings and discourses of the Buddha. So, the true Dhamma is the original suttas, the original discourses of the Buddha. And uh, if we investigate, we find that that is to be found in the earliest four Nikayas, the Diga Nikaya, Majjhima, Sangyutta and Anguttara Nikaya, because these are very consistent, uh, there is no contradiction. And later Dhamma, later teachings, uh, there is contradiction. That is why uh, sometimes, like, like now, uh, there are so many books uh, available and some are not the original teachings of the Buddha, the teachings that contradict the original suttas. That is why even though a monk can be very well learned, uh, very well, um, he knows the Tripitaka, the three Pitakas very well, uh, yet uh, he can have wrong view. And so because of that, uh, they have to be very careful. As I've read before in Anguttara Nikaya 4.180, the Buddha said that in the future, if any monk sees that such and such is the teachings of the Buddha, then uh, without welcoming and without scorning his words, uh, we should compare what he says to be the teachings of the Buddha with the suttas, that means the original four Nikayas, and the Vinaya, the disciplinary code of the monks. And if it is uh, in line uh, with the suttas and vinaya, we can accept it. But if it contradicts the suttas and vinaya, then we should chuck it out. Uh, it is not the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, that is what the Buddha said uh, in Anguttara Nikaya 4.180. So from this, uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, even a very famous monk uh, can have wrong view. This is what is meant in the sutta.